All right. Hello, everyone. Hi. Happy Wednesday and welcome back. Welcome to our part two of this bullet journal class. I'm going to look at the chat. Hello, Lakita. Hi, Tina from Austin, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Hello. Hi, Kelly. All right. Thank you guys for joining in. Of course, my name is Leigh Bella Ralston. I'm also known as Mommy Lay um, on the internet. So I am representing, I am representing Faber Castell USA together with Michael Stores. So I am super excited because I was just sharing with the girls that my page looks a little lonely <laughs> because it doesn't have color. So I really cannot wait to do this class with all of you. Last week we um did the line art and then we also did um, the sketching basically from the sketch to our ideas laying down the ideas in here so I'm super excited to color this page look it's looking a little bit lonely because it's just line art and um but I'm super excited hold on one second let me do this I don't want you guys to get dizzy but I'm gonna switch over there so we have our page here. I already have my plans. I have some bills in there. So we have some weekly uh, to-do lists, as you can see, but it's sad. There's no color and I can't wait to do this with you. So I want to thank everyone for being here. Um, before we get started, just want to say hi to everyone real quick. So I said hi to Tina. I said hi to Kelly and Lakita. Hi, Shirley's. Hello, Boss Queen EJ. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Andy. Hello. Oh, okay, so I let's talk a little bit about coloring medium because I've received a lot of questions. What is my favorite medium to use? Well, that's a little hard to answer because I, I love everything. But I think things to consider when you're when you're bullet journaling or you're journaling, even in your sketchbook. Okay, so the question is. Do you have lots of time to wait for your watercolors, let's say, your watercolors to dry? Because that's the main thing for me. Since my bullet journal is something that I use every day, I open it, flip it, you know, flip through the page to my daily pages and my weekly pages. So it's something that, unfortunately, I can't wait for it forever for it to dry unless I'm doing it in the evening. Then I can, you know, leave it open and then just use it again in the morning but that's one thing to consider do you have you know the patience and the time to wait for your watercolors to dry and that is why my go-to's are always markers markers i love because they're easy to use of all um there's no waiting for them to dry because especially this one the faber castell pit artist pens they are a water-based india ink I have tried many different notebooks because it's part of my job to try many different notebooks. And then I can share which one's my favorite personal choice, of course, then to give the option to my audience. But I have tried the pit artist pens and many different types of notebook, Japanese, you know, Japanese papers, um, the, the Leuchtturm or like term, I don't know the pronunciation from Germany, um, even the regular ones, they don't bleed through. And so that is a big plus to me because then I don't have to worry about um, that excess shadow on the back. If that bothers you, then, you know, those are the little things that we have to consider. Um, now, of course, that's going to depend on the paper that you're using as well, because there are some papers that are much thinner than the others. So sometimes that shadow on the back of the paper, you avoid that. But if you're using a thick paper, then, of course, you're not going to see that. Um, one thing I love about them is that the water-based India inks, they are semi-transparent. So that means you have the ability to layer your ink. It's so much easier to create some shadows. And, you know, instead of using many different markers to layer on top and then blend this one, if you layer the first layer and let it dry, then you add another one it's going to give you a much, a different value, a darker value of the same color. So basically you're saving because you don't have to use many, many different colors. Um, another thing I love, they dry super fast. So if you're a lefty, I know that that's something that, you know, you want to consider because something that smudges, I personally smudge my, I, I just don't have the patience to wait. So this one is really good. Okay. Um, 
since this is a water-based India ink, this is going to be waterproof once they're dry. Yes, you can blend it with water if you work very fast um, because they dry fast. Remember that. So, but if you work fast, you can still you still have the ability to blend it with water. Um, but once they're dry, they're going to be water resistant. And so that is what we're going to do. We're going to use this one as our layer to color in everything in here. But for the background, um, I'm thinking if you have a watercolor in there or a water soluble markers, like the Albert Durer watercolor markers, you can use that. Uh, I'm planning on using maybe some gelatos. If you have the gelatos um, with you, we can use the gelatos as well. We can also use just regular watercolors like this. This one is from Faber Castell. You know, they have so many different types of art supplies from children's to hobbyists to students and of course the professional line which is the green line you see that so every time you see faber castell in the red line this would be the children okay when you see it in the blue line that would be for the students the hobbyists you know uh, the green line is the ones for the professionals and so but you can expect nothing but just excellence all right Guys ready? I think I've <laughs> blabbered enough. All right, for colors, this is a night scene. That's why for the gelatos, I have picked like a deep purple in here. If you have like blues also, like deeper blues, you can use that. Uh, or you can just choose to skip the background also. We can just keep it simple and plain. Now for the colors I have in here, I do have some colors on the list, but the ones that I have, uh, and you can choose your own, of course, mushrooms, you can use red, uh, you can use a tan beige color for the body and for the gills, you can use the same, maybe a pinkish, more like a cinnamon apricot color, uh, but you can also make it one red, the other one is more coral, or you can change to make it blue. I mean, no one's going to stop you. No one's going to grade you. Okay, then I have yellows for the stars, uh, for the moon, and then green for some grass and also the grounding line in here. We're going to color that in and then we have a little snail. I think I'm going to color in the snail red. One thing that I want to share with you guys when I'm working on a page like this, for example, I want to show you, I work with very limited colors. Okay. So this one it was Monday. Okay. But as you can see, I have very limited colors in here. I have the burnt orange, the, um, yellow ochre, then green, and that orange as well. I think that orange one was the scarlet red. Um, so having a limited colors in here makes it where it's pleasing to the eyes. I don't know if it's just a personal preference. I really enjoy it where it's not too much. Now, if you look at it, this one, we have maybe four colors in here. So this one too, we have the grays, you know, and then I, you, I just use the same color in here. Having that limited color, this one, I think this is a theme that we're gonna do today. Although I used a darker, um, that one would be the magenta color, I think. No, I think I use a deeper, this one, I think, let me grab it. I think it's the India red is the one I used for the mushroom, but I think for our weekly, I think I'm going to use the red. So whatever markers you have in there, whatever your choice is, what you're going to use and this one, whatever I have, this is what I'm going to use. So things to consider when we're coloring a whole page like this, you want to start from the top. This is to help us avoid the smudges and all that. So we wanna start with everything that's on top. So that means I'm gonna start with the clouds and the moon and the star. Okay, so I'm gonna get a deep blue for this one. I am going to choose the cobalt blue. So if you have a marker one, if you'd like to choose, there's a indenthrine blue also, but I think it's a little too dark for me. So I'm gonna stay with the cobalt, okay? Now, when you're working with a marker, I think Andy sent me a message on Facebook last time, and she was just wondering, hi, Lei, how do you avoid the streaky marks of the marker? And I do understand her question, okay, because I understand that 
not a lot of people like the streaky marks of the marker, but I think it's hard to avoid that, especially if you're using a paper that seeps the ink right away, because there are some paper where the inks would sit on top of the paper first, and it's not going to leave such harsh marks. Now, there are some papers that once you apply the marker, it leaves, it stains the marker right away. And also the ink, the paper absorbs the ink too fast. Now this paper, that's why I love it because it's much smoother. What it does is that the ink sets on top of the paper a bit longer. So you have a chance to blend much, much better. And also another key is to work in um, maybe a larger area at a time. So if you want longer strokes instead of shorter strokes, maybe that will avoid having that um, streaky marker, right? I hope that makes sense. I'm trying to find where I can zoom in in areas, All right? I think, here we go. So I have my blue in here now. Gonna zoom in just on top. All right, so what I'm saying about the much larger area, I'm gonna show you both. This is what happens if we use smaller, short strokes. You see that one? Like that, and this one. I'm going to cover a much larger area at a time. And you want to go in one direction because this is what's going to happen if you go. So I want to show you. And you're going to see me sometimes in my videos. I do that because I personally don't mind the texture that the markers give me. I personally like to use pencil on top of my markers to actually add more texture. Now that's just my personal preference. So I'm gonna keep coloring. If you guys have any question, I can see the chat. All right. Hi, Amy. Happy November. Isn't it crazy, guys? It's oh, it's going to be Christmas soon. I can't believe this. Ruby said, just finished up my drawing from last time by watching the YouTube video. Oh, my goodness. Thanks for joining us. Glad you're able to join us today. All right. And also, I think one thing to remember when you're working in your journals is to have fun <laughs> because you don't want to take, take it too seriously, unless, of course, it's for a client or um, that's when I'm really, really careful about everything that I'm doing with my illustrations. But when, if it's for my journal, I mean, really, I just, I just have lots of fun. Look at this. So you can see the strokes in here. Some people that, you know, they don't like that. And I do understand it. And I can show you another type of paper where it's going to actually show more of that stroke. So let's just open a page in here so we can see. And I'll show you a bit more. So if you do longer ones, so you can see that a bit more than that. So it's different papers will give you different results each time. So it's not just in the marker that you're using. The paper really does matter. 
So I have two more clouds in here. <laughs> this is our, look at this salty, <laughs> salty cloud that we created. Why are you so salty? And then also when you're trying to color in like this, notice how I'm holding my marker, okay? So I'm using the body, I'm also applying really light pressure. I'm not even applying pressure here and I'm just letting that tip of the marker do the work for me. So it's very light and I'm using just the tip of the body really so that I can cover up a much larger space at a time. And this is what I love about this pit artist pen is that even if I layer it in, of course you don't want it to have so much flood it with ink at the same time, but I know it's not going to bleed through. So there's no bleed through, there's no shadowing on the other side. I love it. But maybe it's the paper also. It's I think it's the combination of both. So again, that is cobalt blue 143. All right. This time I'm going to use the cadmium yellow 107 for our stars. Zoom out just a little bit. Here we go. I'll start from the left to the right, like that. Now, when I'm coloring kawaii characters like this, I cannot put, I cannot not put a blush on. So I'm going to use the coral color. This is a 131. And I'm just creating an oval shape by the cheeks. <laughs> it's just so super cute. Now, if you want to do a little bit of blending while my yellow, my cadmium yellow is still a little wet, um, I'm going to use a dark chrome yellow and I'm just going to add a little bit of this one just to the bottom part. And while this one is still wet, I'm going to go over with that cadmium yellow again and kind of blend it because we don't want any of those sharp lines. Zoom that in again so you guys can see. And I'll repeat it with the moon so you guys can see how I did that. Okay, so we start with a cadmium yellow, the lighter yellow. And we'll just cover it. All right. And then we're going to add the dark chrome yellow, 109. And then that yellow. Excuse me. <clears throat> I just started having this itch in my throat. I'm like, <coughs> I don't know what happened. Okay, and then I'll use a coral again to add my blush. Now you can choose to have like um, rays uh, or a glow outside the moon and the stars if you choose to. Kind of like just go around it and just add some yellow outside. So we're coloring outside the line now. We're breaking the rules. Right. And we'll add some there too. Just color outside. And then I'll color the rest of the stars. Just like that. Okay. And then I'll zoom out again. 
what should we color the bug? Huh. I think I would color it yellow so we can just bring a little bit of that yellow down here also. I think we can do that. Now, if you're using um, a water-soluble marker, let's say, and if you want to blend with water, if you have a water brush like this, you can actually use it with a pit artist while it's still wet. Because remember, once they're dry, they're going to be waterproof, right? But I'll show you just a little bit. But you can blend with blend it with water. As long as you work slightly fast, you'll be able to do so. But again, please do keep in mind that not all papers are created equal. I think it's the brightness. Let me adjust a little bit of that brightness. Okay, I'll add a little more. And when you're doing some, some blending, you want to remember that you want to do it little at a time. So I'll add, add just a little bit at the bottom. Honestly, when I'm working in my bullet journal, I don't do a whole lot of blending, maybe just a little bit, but I don't worry too much about my light source because it's just, it's for fun. <laughs> you know, I don't want to overthink things too much. It's like I'm creating something imperfectly perfect in here. And sometimes with, with a whole lot of expectation, that's where disappointment comes in. And to be honest with you, and plus, if you're working fast, if it really is your planner, then you know that your time is limited also. Funny how sometimes online you get a whole lot of comments, you know, not always are super nice, <laughs> but I think it's, it's part of being online. But, you know, to think that you have time to do that, <laughs> my answer always is I do make time to do this. And I think that's what we need to really remember. When you make time to create and enjoy yourself, you're giving, you're gifting yourself, you know, sense of joy. To me, what do you get when you're journaling, when you're doing note listing or documenting? I mean, I think it's, it's the gift I give to myself from my inner child, because when I'm working in my journals, when I'm planning, honestly, time is just like, what, what? <laughs> it's like, did I, oh, did I spend that much time in my notebook? But I, I sure do. Truly time fly. All right. What do we have? It's so cute. So I just use, I think it's lilac. It's a very, very light violet purple you know still confused with the purple and violet color sometimes but it's that lilac color there you go that's perfect lilac color super pretty uh you can also use a light blue for your wings but if you want to make it red oh my goodness please all right so for the red i think i'm going to use two different shades i have here a pink carmine 127 and I also am going to be using the Pale Geranium Lake 121. So I'm going to go one Pale Geranium and the other one would be the Pink Carmine. So I'll start with a Pale Geranium Lake. And also, uh, we weren't able to do this one. I added some spots in my mushrooms, as you can see, you know, those white speckles. So if you want to do that real quick, um, you can do that. But I just added just for a little bit of texture on top so you're gonna go around just making some imperfect circles like that okay and so i'm gonna start coloring now you can choose to use watercolor for this one if you like but like what I said, in real life, if I'm using this as a planner, I usually do my planning um, 
on a Monday morning, but last week I did something where, because I wanted to start doing art every day. So what I did was while watching sports last Sunday, I got my bullet journal and I just started sketching my whole week, my daily page, um, it's just sketching basic sketch. And then what I did was every single day I would do the line art and then color it. So instead of me trying to come up with ideas every day, because I think that's the hardest part is to come up with the idea. What am I going to draw? You look at that white blank page and you're like, I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do. It's the most thing is like when you look at white blank page, but so on a Sunday while just watching TV, I just started sketching. And so now I realize that that is the key. I think that's what I'm going to start doing every Sunday, just sketch out the whole idea. And then every day do the line art and color it, you know, so I'm doing something creative every day. So I think I'm going to skip one since I have this on, I'll just continue. So I'll skip one and then color this one, the same color. And look, everything's not going to be perfect. <laughs> I don't always color inside the line. Most of the time, most of them are outside the lines. I probably failed while I was in kindergarten. Color inside the line. I mean, the line art is super cute and all that. But look at this when you have colors. It just like... <laughs> so so magical earlier it's kind of like oh it's super cute now you have colors in here everything's kind of like um alice in wonderland where you know the movie was in black and white at first and then she went to wonderland not the cartoons and then everything was in color bright fun colors okay well, that's a little tricky, the middle part. And remember when I was talking about the pit artist pens, they are semi-translucent. So be careful when you're adding another layer, for example, when you're coloring and you're adding another layer on top of that layer, what you're doing is you're intensifying the colors. And so here I was trying to get in the middle and I just kept adding layers. So some parts of there are much darker than the rest. So if you don't want intentionally don't want parts <clears throat> that are much darker, <laughs> so you want to be careful of that. So you want to make sure that you go one line after the other. I'm going to go here. And I love using brush pens when I'm coloring because look at this. I can cover a much larger space. And plus, the streaks are much smoother than using a bullet tip. You know, so I guess that's another thing that we should talk about is that if you're going to do a whole lot of coloring, I think you're, you would, you should pick up a brush pen instead than those fine tips. But if you do a lot of writings and um, letterings, then those fine tips are great too. But even with me, of course, my lettering, I love the brush lettering. So I really use brush pens for, for almost everything, coloring, highlighting, <laughs> hand lettering, and everything else. Oops, I'm going to be careful with my froggy's eyes. This is right over there. So hold on, I'm confused now. This one, this one, this one, this one. <laughs> Oh, Andy, thank you so much. Yeah, um, if you look at, if you actually look at children's storybooks, um, in this 
in the community, the art community, you're actually going to see that. You know, if you use the hashtag children's book illustration, you're going to see that they use a lot of textures. So it's going to look like they're watercolors and then they add the details back using some colored pencils. And those are those yummy textures that you see. And then there's splatters. There's, you know, when you're using a pencil, there's cross hatching that adds more texture in your illustration. So there's many different things, but I guess everything is you just have to learn to embrace it because I'm with you. I was in the beginning. Um, I was using a lot of alcohol markers. And so it, alcohol markers, the way they blend is that they really absorbed into the paper. So you get a much smoother blending. So I've gotten used to that. And then I started using colored pencils and you can't imagine the texture that you get from a colored pencil um, especially if you're using a textured paper also. So you get those white, you know, cracks in between. So you get that textured coloring when you're using colored pencils. And so I think switching from the other markers to watercolors and then colored pencils using many different types of medium made me appreciate different types of results. So, you know, that's why I really enjoy working with many different types of medium. I cannot say that markers are just my favorite or watercolors because it really just depends on what my, what the illustration is calling for, a type of medium. And so I hope that that makes sense. All right, this one is the pink carmine. Here we go. And I'm gonna make this one look with more texture so you guys can see the difference. So I'm gonna go do short strokes, okay? Instead of long ones so we can see the difference. This is like an ASMR, can you guys hear that? Oops, marker. But this paper is so good, you will hardly see that texture. And the way the India ink sets on top of the paper is just, it's love. Look at that, having two different colors, I think just added more, um, more characters to the mushroom. So it's not just one all red in here. Let's do this. Can you, can you see the difference? I cannot see the difference. I think it's the same as this one. And I was doing long strokes in there. This one's much shorter strokes, but I can hardly tell. Do the same in here. So I'm doing short strokes. but I'm not adding her on top of where I applied it already. So basically it's just short strokes, but not adding on top of that where I've already covered. Cause I'll show you later what it's gonna look like if I go over the same area twice it's going to change the value and we're going to add some deeper value in there and it's not 
it's not bad, but it's just going to be different. So I want to try and avoid that. Is it just me? But when I'm coloring like this, I get into a zone. I'm like, <laughs> sometimes I forget you guys are there. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm coloring. <laughs> it's like, I'm so, so in the moment that it's like, oh, oh my gosh, I'm talking to somebody. <laughs> but I get so lost in this world. That's why it brings me so much joy and healing, really working in my journal because it's, it's, I got a question the other day. Do you just use that for drawings or do you actually do lists and planning? You know, it's, it's the thing that we talked about last week about having and keeping a bullet journal is that it is, you know, it's, it has different purpose for different people, you know? So to me, it's both. It is. It's just so happened that I'm so blessed that um, creating is what I do for a living. And so I'm able to create and share with my audience. And at the same time, bringing so much joy personal, you know, personally to me. And so I'm lucky to be able to share it with you guys. It's like when I'm like in the small, tiny corners like that, I'm like holding my breath. Like, because I have heavy hands and just one heavy stroke, I'm going outside the line. But you know, you need that sometimes in the world. You need to color outside the line. It's part of life, but there. Hee hee. All right, <laughs> you tiny mushrooms. Okay, so for the gills, I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use apricot. No, I don't know. I'm going to use the apricot first, and then I'll use the coral on top. But if you just have like a beigey, a pinkish coral tone, you can use that too. I'm just going to start with the, um, apricot color first. And the body of the mushroom too, or the stem, what do you call it? Any botany expert here? And for my lists and plans here, I used the um, super fine Pit artist pens. And I think it was dark sepia. Color the gills, color this part. So mushroom stem root or trunk. <laughs> no worry, we're just all kind of the same, huh? Yeah. It oh, thank you so much, Kelly. I appreciate that. I know I personally love watching like um videos on YouTube where they're coloring also, and they have such a calming demeanor. Um, and there are moments, of course, where I like the fun ones too, that kind of like does crazy things in their illustrations, but I personally love watching a lot of um, art videos, if not cooking videos, <clears throat> but um, I think I watched equally as much. And then I love documentaries too. So what do you guys love to watch when you're creating? Or do you like to kind of like stay in the zone or just listen to music? I am not going to lie yesterday. I was watch. I was listening Christmas songs already. I have that on my playlist and I was working and I'm like jamming to some Christmas music. No shame. No shame here, guys.
The reason why I'm also holding my pen 45 degree angled like this instead of like this, because if you do it like this, you're basically just going to be using the tip of your brush pen. And what's going to happen is that it's almost using just tips. So it's going to give you that um, sharper strokes. And at the same time, you're going to cover little, little space at a time. So if you're holding your marker 45 degree angled from the paper, you're going to cover a much larger space. And I'm not holding it close to the tip, but I'm holding it in the middle, you know, almost to the end of the marker, because I get much better control. And it's also allowing me to not put in too much pressure in my hand, because it can get um, it can get tiring, especially if you're like coloring a much larger space. So what it does, it just naturally um, allows me to not apply too much hand too much pressure because when I'm writing, I write so heavily. And so this way I have a much better control of my pressure when I'm coloring. So I'm not, I don't get tired too fast because I'm going to be honest. It gets tiring. If you're applying too much pressure, I remember back in school, I don't know if they do I, in the Philippines, we used to write so much Everything was like writing, writing, writing. And so we did write um, a lot. And I think I would get cramps at the end of the day <laughs> because we would write so much. And then with my hand pressure, ooh, that was no fun. So try this one sometimes. I know it's a little tricky if you're doing it for, you know, if you're beginning to just you're just starting to do this um, 45 degree angled and holding it um, back at the end of the marker instead of so close to it. Try it and see how much difference that pressure you're going to give to your pen. Might be a little tricky in the beginning, but I think the more you do it, the more you're going to get used to it. It's almost just like allowing the gravity to work. And it's much smoother this way. I can't believe that the time is run goes by so fast. Okay, I'm gonna go work a little bit faster. Like that. Right. Ooh. I am going to minimize that. Let's see. All right. So remember that coral color. I am going to add this color in the middle part of the gills like this. So just add it like that. So we're adding some shadows in here and then use the same one, the apricot color to blend it just like that. Okay. Yes, Kelly, these markers are permanent. That's why we'll be able to use some gelatos, kind of like watercoloring on top of this one. And you know, the amazing part about the Pit Artist pens is that they have a very, very high rating of light fastness, which means that these colors are gonna stay vibrant for a very long time. Here we go. So I'm switching between the coral um, and between the apricot. So I apply the coral just in that inner corners and then apply apricot on top of it and move the coral ink and blend it out. Oop, I think I didn't add some apricot in here. So I'm just going to let that sit for a little bit. And I'll work on this one. Like that. There 
here. You're very welcome. Okay, I'm come back here. So what happens is that when you start adding and playing around with shadows and highlights, um, your illustrations are not going to just look flat. You know, it's going to be 2D. It's not going to be 3D, but it's going to be like a 2D where it has layers and dimensions. And so it adds some, you're building some characters in here. And it's, it's just, there's layers in there. So it's not just going to be flat looking. But again, if you want that just clean, flat colors, uh, more like graphic look, then of course that's also fine. All right. So remember when I said that the pit artist pens are semi-translucent, the reason why I said that is because it's much easier to add some shadows. For example, I'm using the same color, the apricot color, but I'm going to add another layer. What I we did, just adding the same but look at that, we changed the value and we add a much deeper value using just the same color, right? To me, that's such a big bonus because you're saving money instead of using three different colors to just make a nice blending, just like that. We're just adding shadow here. This one, the shadow is going to be here to the left because this one is really leaning. But always be careful, though, when you're doing a little bit of blending. I think one thing to think about when you're doing some blending is that how much moisture, um, how much moisture can you really put on your paper and how much moisture can your paper stand, you know, because that's going to depend. So if you want to really saturate the inks in there, then you're going to get that little bit of paper texture. Because of course it's a, you know you saturated with so much ink, so you're lifting that the surface of your paper too. So sometimes it's much much better to wait for that first layer to dry, like what we did. You know, apply that first layer first, first layer first, um, and then now we're adding a little bit of second layer to create some shadows in here, right? Now, guess what? It's time for some blush on. So I'm going to add some blush on add some pink, the same coral color. Going to use. Play around with your blush ons also. So instead of all ovals, maybe one that's like much smaller and just a circle one. You can use like a heart. We'll add that. This one. So just playing around, making and doing things just differently. I think this one I'm going to make hard too. She's so cute. Like that. All right. Okay, so I'm going to use some green for my frog, but check this out since we have the frog is going to be green my grass is going to be green so what can we do of course you, you want to use two different values of green or two different colors of green um for example you want to use a much brighter much you know lighter green we have the light green in here we have earth green too um this is more like a sage color I think I have another one here. This one is the May Green. I love this color, May Green 170. So I'll make my, I'll color in my frog much lighter green. So I'm gonna use the May Green for my frogs. And then I'll use the permanent green olive for the grounding line here and also the grass, okay? 
I didn't create any texture for my froggy. So I'm just adding some circles because I'm going to leave that white. Or you can also add a darker green just to add some texture to your frog. And I think having textures with this um, whimsical type of illustration also, I think it's a good thing because it really does remind me of like um, a children's book, storybook, you know, just like that. So I left some part white. But like what I said, we can come, come back in here and add like a darker green if you want to. Where's my darker green? We can choose, oh, same color. <laughs> of course I did Dutch. And I have it in my hand. So you can add a little bit of that texture. Maybe go around that white that we created just to add that. Color in. I think I'm going to leave where her belly is like white, just like that. So I just created a hump. I'm going to leave that space white just to have a variety. So she'll be different from the other frog, just like that. But you know what, sometimes these little things that because having coming up with the ideas is, you know, not always the easiest. And so little things like this is like, oh, you know what, I never thought of that. And that's why until now, I love watching um, videos, you know, different teachers, different artists, because there's always something that you can learn. We always learn something every day. Um and so little things like, oh, yeah, I never thought of that. I'm going to start doing that, too. You're not being, you're just adding to what you already know and then applying it and make it your own. Play around. I think that's it. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. I think I was just talking to my son about that last night. Don't be afraid to make a fool of yourself sometimes. I think it's part of life. Um, as long as you're not hurting anyone and you're just you, it's part of the lesson, then don't be afraid to do that. I think um, with art, a lot of that implies too, you know, so don't be afraid to make mistakes and then learn from it. Same with life. Again, I'm here in the middle part. It's a little tricky there in the middle part, but we got it. Just like that. And this one, I'm not trying to be perfect here with the grounding line. I'm just there. Adding more. All right. Because if we're running out of time, I'm going to leave this one and color that later. But I want to show you because of the Pit Artist Pen being India ink and being a waterproof once they're dry and water resistant, we can now add and color in watercolor in the background without having to worry um, so much. Because if this is a water soluble marker, once water touch this marker, it's going to react. It's going to blend. You're going to create mud in here. And I think that's why mixed media is very interesting. As long as you understand the types of medium that you're using, um, that's where it gets really interesting because I know that I want to color in the background. So I chose to use the pit artist pen in here to not worry about the blending and everything like that. So again, if watercolor, you can choose to use that. If you have the Alberta watercolor markers, those are going to work too. But I feel like I am going to use the gelatos. So if you're not familiar with the gelatos, this is the Faber-Castell gelatos. These are creamy pigment stick, water-soluble stick. And it's like a lipstick. <laughs> if you've attended my class before, we've used this many, many times. As a matter of fact, I think this is my cue to invite you guys for next week's premium class. We're going to be... I don't know if it's the gelatos that we're doing, but we're going to be painting a cardinal. It's like a winter scene. Um, I love doing premium classes because I'm not in a hurry. 
you know, I can take my time and really um, explain and create and not so much in a hurry when we're doing these free classes, but that would be next Wednesday. Um, if you're able to join, I would really appreciate that. I would enjoy that having you again in the class. And so as you can see here, I'm just picking up colors from the gelatos. This is the Faber-Castell water brush pen. I love this one because there's already water in there. Now I'm not gonna worry about the stars. I'm just gonna add colors in here. And this one, the way I'm coloring this, you're gonna see textures in there. You're gonna see some water marks in there. Now you guys are able to see that. See the watermarks are in there. Well, let's spit. But I'm gonna concentrate just here at the bottom. And see how it's not gonna move. We've done that. That's not gonna move anymore. All the pit artist pens. So it's not gonna blend, it's not gonna bleed. You're good to go. But you don't wanna cover the colors also. So I'm just doing this. And I love doing using this with the gelato sticks also because I can't control um, the pigments that I'm picking up, the color. Sometimes with watercolor, it's a little hard to do that. So I pick up more than I should <laughs> or than I want, I should say. Um, so sometimes I end up with a mess, but the more you do things, of course, repetition is the key. So the, the more you do things, you get used to it, you know? So it's kind of like in cooking, you don't measure things anymore, or at least I don't, <laughs> maybe you're different, but I just don't, I just kind of just know what to do next. So same thing with the, um, with my art supplies, I kind of just know how much, how much product I should pick up and here, but I think the gelatos are much easier to gauge than some watercolor, from, especially from the tubes. Oh my goodness, I can just keep dipping and dipping from the watercolor and then I apply it. Then I just have this burst of color. I'm like, oh no, 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 no. And then I try to control it with water and then I end up with a pool of water. And so sometimes it ends up being a disaster, but you know what? It's those imperfectly perfect timing in life. All right. So I'm just going to do this. It's just water on top. I have a little bit more here, but I love using the pit artist pens because see, I'm not overly worried, especially I'm using, I'm doing the background because if I'm using a water-based marker in here, I don't think I would dare to do the background in watercolor. Definitely not because I know I would mess it up and it will just bleed everywhere and I'm not going to be happy. I think I'm gonna use this metallic color. It's the metallic grape, the gelato's metallic grape. I love this one. It's so gorgeous. The metallic colors are just love. So with the gelatos, you can actually use them, smudge them with your finger. You can pick it up with a brush pen like this. It's so versatile that you can use it many, many different ways and it's just, a joy, a joy. Once you start using it and playing with the gelatos, um, it's going to be hard to stop because there's just so much. That you look at that shimmer. I don't know if you guys can see it, but because of the light, but it's just so gorgeous. So gorgeous. But anyway, guys, <laughs> Lakita said second emotion. She, she agrees with me about the gelatos. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoy this class. Um, I would love to see what you create, what you colored, your journals, your, you know, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to follow me on social media at Mommy Lay. I love to stay connected. You know, if you have any questions, as long as it has nothing to do with math, <laughs> I'm there for you. But thank you so much, Michael Stores, for providing classes like this. Thank you so much, Faber Castell USA. And and thank you all for joining because it's always more fun with you around. I'm always looking forward for Wednesday. And speaking of that, I'm looking forward to next week where to paint and play. Thank you for spending some time with us. Stay creative and stay happy. Bless you all. Thank you.